Uh, Dave, uh, give us your empire hours again, please. Dave, uh, give us your amp please. Camp hours 105 on number one, and uh, I'm sorry, 110 on number one and 115 on number two. Roger. Can attitudes, if you're ready to copy. Go. Roll is one left. Pitch is zero. Heading is two four zero. I'm in system reset and we're driving down to zero. And the uh, sun shadow device is at zero. Okay, Dave. And Dave, you're going to be uh, close to 279er on your heading. And I'll uh, fine tune that in a minute. Okay, well, I'll stand by. I'm still, the system reset's still driving. Roger. And uh, Jim, we'd like uh, for you to take a breather here for a minute while Dave's getting the nav realigned. Okay. All I do is tidy the, the blankets. Hey, Jim, try some of that uh, fruit steak. It's really good. We're cutting about it. Boy, I just had a couple of bites. It's really good. A little quick energy. A little water. And, Dave, the fine-tuned heading is 279er. Seven nine, right. One hour, 53 minutes into EVA-1. Okay, the Mesa blankets are tidy, Joe. Okay, Jim, sounds good. Pressure in both suits staying at 3.8 pounds. Sitting on 279. System reset is on. SSD is stowed. And I'll uh, see. That's good, Dave. That's good, Eric. Can you come join me? Yeah, I'm right behind you. Oh, you are? Yeah, I'm good ready. So, let's go. I'm ready to configure you. Good. Or you configure me. Okay. Let me get the switches off here, so we don't have anybody drive off with it when we're gone. Okay. I put up my antenna so I can read you a little better. Yeah, that's a good idea. Your antenna's up. My lap never got fixed. OK, 
Okay, the hammer's on the LMP. Hammers on the LMP. Got some core tube caps for me. Commander Dave Scott attaching geology equipment onto the lunar module pilot's portable life support system. Can it to your right and I'll put it on. Bag number four is on the LMP. Okay. Get me, old buddy. Okay, Dave and Jim, as a reminder, before you climb on the rover, you may want to go to men cooling. It may get chilly while you ride. Okay. Your bag secured. Okay. How does the business look to you down there, Joe? They're looking uh, smooth as silk down here. Okay. And Jim, if convenient now, you might give us an EMU status check. Okay, I'm reading uh, 385, all flags are clear. And, uh, looks like 65%. Uh, Roger. Okay, and uh, Joe, I'm reading 65%, all flags clear, and 3.85. Roger, Dave, let's do a little geology. Boy. Okay, Mr. Navigator. By the way, little arrow for uh, on the, uh, the heading indicator on the LRV nav system worked good. Okay, we copy. when you get on. Easy, 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 Jim. Easy. Huh? 
Okay, Dave, and we're standing by for a mark as you leave. Yeah, okay, Joe, I got my trusty seatbelt hooked under a cannon plug. The new surprise. Jim. Are you ready to copy some readings, Joe? Roger. Okay, uh, 250 000. Well, all zeros there. Amp hours, 090. 092-8085. And uh, forward motor temps are lower limit. And the rear lower limit. Roger, Jim. Thank you. I'll scale low. Okay, Jim, here we go. Okay, Dave, we want uh, a heading of 203. Okay, 203. Checkpoint 1. Gonna miss that double anchor, but I can see that in there. Okay, we're moving forward, Joe. Roger. now to miss some craters off to our right, very subdued craters. 
camera, take a little zigzag here. Oh, on our right is, uh, hang on, get a feel for this thing. Nine yeah. kilometers an hour, Joe. Hold, hold the geology, let's get the rover squared away first. Eight kilometers, up a little rise. Eight, turning back. Two zero three, huh? Okay. Two zero three for uh, two miles. Okay. It's a nice young fresh one. Uh, Dave and Jim, Houston. He's bearing between 8 and, eight and 10. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, our TV pan suggests you can go straight for St. George Crater, and you'll find Elbow OK. And uh, we're suggesting you omit checkpoint 1. Risling Crater should be a good landmark along the way. And head 208. Over. OK, 208, Joe. Okay, we're doing 10 kilometers now. Now we're heading uphill. When we head uphill, it drops down to about 8. No dust, Joe. No dust at all. Yes, sir. Sounds great. And, Jimmy, we're standing by for amp readouts. Kilometers now. Okay. Uh, amp readout is uh, 15. Like 15 on one, I can't quite see two. Okay, I guess, could this be rising right here, Jim? Probably is, this large depression off to our left. Yeah. Well, I can see I'm gonna have to keep my eye on the road. Boy, there's a, it's really rolling hills, Joe. Just like 14, up and down we go. Oh, this must be Earthlight, huh? Could that be? Boy, look at that. We're going to have to do some fancy maneuver in here. Oh, there's a long gate depression here uh, before you get to uh, Risling. I don't think we're to Risling yet. Risling ought to be uh, about 1.4, and we've only gone, uh, see, 0.4. Roger, Jim. We think you're shorter Risling now. <laughs> I think that's probably rising out about 11 o'clock to us, Dave. Okay. At about uh, maybe one kilometer. Yeah. Okay, Joe, the rover handles quite well. Uh, we're moving, uh, and I guess an average of about eight kilometers an hour. Uh, it's got uh, very low damping compared to the uh, 1G rover, but the uh, stability is about the same. It uh, negotiates small craters quite well, although there's a lot of roll. Uh, it feels like we need the seat belts, doesn't it, Jim? Yeah, really do. The uh, steering is quite responsive, even with only the rear steering. It uh, does does quite well. There doesn't seem to be too much slip. I can maneuver pretty well with the thing. If I need to make a turn sharply, why it responds quite well. There's there's no accumulation of dirt in the wire wheels. Just like in the owner's manual, Dave. Okay, we're heading right. Like manual, yeah, man. Okay, I've got it on the wall here for a minute, and we're up to 12. Slope, it drops off. Yeah. Are you deliberately slowing down? No, I slow down. I want to get my, my feeling here before we start spreading. Oh, look at this little fresh one. Little fresh boy, look at that. Lots of very angular frags all over the thing. Yeah, we passed uh, several of those. Okay, I'm going to cut down to the south here, Jim. Yeah, that'd probably be best. Because I think that's probably, uh, let's see, range point seven. Uh, still not rising. Shouldn't be. Whoa. Hang on. Because we have a, a large subdued 
when at our uh, one o'clock position, I'd estimate uh, 50 kilometers wide. Roger, Jim. Point eight. Okay, how are we doing on the uh, heading, Jimmy? Okay, if we're heading right for uh, elbow. Pick a spot here, okay. Do I have to pick your way? No. You're only about halfway uh, to uh, checkpoint one. We shouldn't. Uh, what I thought was Risling it was probably not Risling. Risling is a larger crater, and it's out at about one point. Uh, should be about one point four. That's a firm, Jim. Right on. Okay. Fucking Bronco. Yeah, man. You back off in a power, it keeps right on going. The uh, zero phase lighting is pretty tough, Joe. We're going to have to make sure we keep it at an angle. Once I look into zero phase, it all looks flat. a nice little round one meter crater with uh, very angular frags all over the bottom and the rims and glass in the very center. About a meter across. Roger, Dave. And Jim, as you come up on the reel, you may want to turn your 16 millimeter camera on. Yeah, when we get to the reel, we will, Joe. Can't see the reel at all from here. Still looking for Risling. Roger. 1.1. 1. 1. Okay, right now our bearing is uh, 039 for 1.1. 1. 1. Roger. Jim, give me, well, I just have to drive around these craters, that's all there is to it. Yeah. Because we have a large subdued one on our right about uh, 60 meters wide with uh, several small ones in the center. By small, I mean about uh, 10 meters in diameter. Roger, Jim. Well, it really, uh, really bounces, doesn't it? Well, I think uh, there's sort of a, the rear end breaks out at about uh, 10 to 12 clicks. Roger, Dave. It sounds like it's uh, like steering a boat with the rear steering and the rolling motion. Yeah, that's right. It sure is. Hey, there's a good fresh one right there. Yeah, I was looking at that one at 1 o'clock to us right now. Very Very fresh, yeah. angular block, some lighter albedo material on the, uh, the south rim. We kick up a little dust when we go through these craters. Yeah. Seems like when we get to the bottom, and I can see the trajectory of the fragments coming from the... Looks like, you know, they're coming from the front wheels and coming up uh, kind of around my arm and then forward. Yeah, but it's not dusty. I mean, they, uh, and, uh, it looks like uh, millimeter-type particles. Yeah. Hang on. Okay, let's see the distance. One point... Three. Yeah, I think there's a large one coming up at about 12.30 to 1 o'clock that could be Risling. Okay. Jim, that sounds good, or it could be the large one to the northwest of Risling. Risling may be uh, coming up on your left now. Yeah, there's a large one over there too, Joe.
Uh, Roger, but your heading is beautiful. Continue on. Okay, our heading is about averaging about uh, two zero zero two one zero. Yours, Dave. Uh, maybe we ought to take this gear to Flagstaff next time. Yeah. Uh, off in the west now, I can see uh, Bennett Ridge. Oh, yeah, I've seen it all the way. You can see just a peak of it all, almost all, all the time. And, Rover, this is Houston. Uh, your range to Risling is about 1.7, so you may be short of that still. They just clicked okay. off 1.7 and are relative bearing 036. Good stroke, all right. And uh, 
I sure get the impression that uh, almost looks like a slump feature, but uh, we'll take some good pictures of that. Because you see the same linear, linear type pattern in the, uh, the east side of the rail. And those, the linear pattern there is parallel, almost like uh, layering in the rail. And then as you uh, look up slope, up the front, that layering takes that, that dip to the northeast that Dave had mentioned earlier. Roger, Jim, and can, can you actually see the east side of the rail towards the south there? Oh yeah, I can see, uh, looking directly south, I can see that, uh, that exposure, the exposure uh, that faces northwest. I can look down and I can see, uh, I think I can see Hadley Sea down there. Remarkable. Yeah, I think I can see the south rim of Hadley Sea. Jim, copy. Copy. And uh, they were heading, uh, hitting about 165 right now. Try to stay on the uh, fairly level and smooth part of the real rim. But looking over to the uh, the edge of the the rail at this point, I see a. A large uh, concentration of large boulders, large rocks, and I'd estimate the size, they're angular, and uh, they're all of the same color and texture, as, as far as I can tell from here. See that con? Well, you better yeah. watch the road. No, I see what you're saying there. You, just keep, uh, you, you keep talking, let me drive. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first uh, good concentration of uh, large rocks that I've seen. Very similar to the uh, large rocks that uh, that 14 saw up at the top of Cone. Roger, Jim, we copy, and uh, your range should be coming up on 3.1 at Station 1. Okay, relative, right now, Joe, our bearing is 1.8, range is 2.3. Roger. Okay, now, Joe, I can uh, see the uh, the bottom of uh, the valley, head valley that leads down toward uh, Hadley Sea. I can see the, the bottom of the rill. It's uh, very smooth. I see two very large boulders that are right uh, on the surface there, on the top of the very smooth portion of the bottom of the rill. And the one to the uh, the southeast, I can see the uh, the track of where it's uh, rolled down slope. Roger, Jim, copy. And is the bottom V-shaped or fairly flat? Oh, it's it's flat. I'd, well, it's hard to estimate. I'd, I'd estimate maybe. Uh, Oh, 200 meters wide of a flat, flat area in the bottom. Oh, and I can see what we thought was Bridge Crater, and uh, it definitely would not have been a place to cross Hadley Rill. It's just a depression in the west wall 
of the rail. And I, uh, boy, at this vantage point, uh, there are sure a lot more blocks exposed on the, uh, yeah. on the far side of the rail. I'm contrasting yeah. now the, uh, the rail to the southeast. Hang on, Jim. Okay. And the rail to the uh, side of the rail to the northwest. Roger, Jim, copy all that, loud and clear. And Dave, is the front uh, wheels, are the front wheels wandering off of uh, straight ahead as you drive along there? No, they're okay, Joe. It's just, uh, there are a lot of craters and it's just 40 driving. I've just got to keep my eye on the road every second. Uh, Roger, we understand that. Just trying to get some engin engineering information here. Apparently your front wheels are tracking straight ahead. Is that correct? That's correct, and uh, of course when we turn, they dig in, and uh, it makes the rear end break out, but uh, it's okay, we handle it. I knew you could. And add to Jim's comment that the, uh, near, the near side of the rear wall is smooth without any outcrops there by St. George, and the far side has got uh, all sorts of debris. Almost looks like we could drive down in on this side, doesn't it? Uh, stand by on that, Dave. So we could drive back out. Oh, now I can turn around and look uh, to the northwest where the real trends to the, the north. But I'll uh, let me concentrate on elbow for the moment. Yeah, let's get to elbow. That must have been off for elbow. Our map says 2.7. Joe said 3.2, I guess. Our estimated gym was 3.1 uh, from your landing site. I see, that's right. That's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is really a sporty driving course. Man, oh man, what a Grand Prix this is. Yeah, but you want to go a little farther east. See, that's elbow out at uh, 11.30. Oh, yeah, Raj. Gosh, that's a long way away. Yeah. Distances are very deceiving. Like we've been driving for a an hour. Uh, are you sure that's elbow, Jim? Yeah. Yeah, you want to go farther east, do you? Okay. Down this little crater. Back up. That's elbow out at our one o'clock position. Shoot, this is elbow right here, I believe, my friend. Yeah, this is elbow right here. Yeah, yeah, this large one. The one we're just trending into. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big fella, isn't it? That sure is. I don't know. Uh, Take a look up here and we'll see how she looks. Maybe you can, uh, you know, angle uphill here. Yeah, there's. How we do it on time there, uh, Houston? Like gangbusters. Dave and Jim, uh, continue on, and we'll give you the exact number in a minute. Okay, do, do we want to stop at elbow or press on? Stop. Follow the checklist, just as planned. Just as planned, okay. Okay, let's go right up on the ridge line there. I see some debris. Maybe we can get some uh, refreshment in the rim. Be looking down sun. Oh, look at this baby climb the hill. Yeah, climbing is about eight clicks. Yeah, man. Uh, Jim, can you get an amp reading for us as you climb? Uh, oh, sir. Yeah, reading, uh... Oh, it's just about, it's 10 on bad one, Joe. Roger. Got a good slope here, about uh, I'd say uh, 10 degrees. We're going up right now. Man, I felt it. Did you feel it? Okay, now we're up on the high. 
high part, and we're on the uh, we're on the east rim, east rim of uh, Elbow. Stupendous. Okay, this ought to give the folks back home something to look at right here. Okay, we're at our first stop. Boom. Okay, power's beauty down. And Joe, here's some readings for you. Roger. 185 and uh, shoot, I'm reading the lower limit on the motor temps, both forward and rear. Doesn't look like that uh, gauge is operating. Maybe they're still cool. I thought so. Okay, Joe, I'll uh, give you a TV here. Roger. Okay, Joe, high gains pointed. And uh, we've got a fair good, fair amount of dust on the rover. Very light, thin. Okay, I'm taking a pan. Okay. Dave and Jim, uh, we lost calm temporarily here. Stand by. Uh, Dave, uh, you're very uh, broken and uh, garbled. Uh, stand, stand by one, we're working. And we lost calm with him, Jim. Okay, you're loud and clear now, Dave. Do a quick sample here and then press on. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to get the calm back. Did you get your pan? Okay, yeah, we've got the calm. You're loud and clear now. Sample. Yeah. We want a, ra a radial sample. Yeah, okay. I'll go back to FMTV and let them... Okay. A quick radial sample here. Yeah. Let me find your wind. Yeah. Here, Jimmer. Right over here's one. I kick dust all over him so easy. How about that one right there? I think we'll get that in the bag. Go. Okay, and Dave and Jim, this is Houston with a voice check. Bunch of shadow. Yeah, 
back. Jump. Okay, uh, Dave and Jim, Houston with a comm check. Do you read over? Number uh, 156. Roger, copy 156. Wait, very friable. Looks uh, like a wrench, all right. Quite friable, but I see a lot of sparklies in there. Bangler with lots of dust on it. Roger, Dave. Copy loud and clear. Continue on. And this is Houston with a comm check. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a lot better, Joe. I thought we lost you there for a minute. Uh, we're hearing every word, loud and clear. Okay, I guess it was in your configuration down there. Okay, we'll hop up here and get another one. Got the down sun. Okay. Get the location shot here. Okay, Joe, these are buried about uh, an inch or so. The one I have is uh, subangular. It's covered with dust, but uh, beneath the dust, by golly, it. Uh, by golly, it. Uh, it's quite friable. And uh, I see olivine. Look at this, Jim. The sunlight, would you call that olivine? And there's a big lamp in there. Look at the big lamp, about a centimeter long and a millimeter wide. Yeah. Planch. Now let me put this in your bag. It's sure. a light gray, uh, millimeter-sized grains with uh, like two millimeter size phenocryst in it. Gosh, Roger, that, that jet is really safe. Really we copy you loud and clear. We need a bag number for that. Bag number 157. Roger. Let me get you another one. My goodness. Let me get another one out of here. Okay. That one's really buried. A little too big to go in there. Yeah. There's a little one. Okay, let me just stick it in. Okay. Did I put any uh, soil in there? Yeah, give me a bag. I'll soil it up to dig a little light trench in there and we'll... Uh... I, got, I got a feeling that uh, Dr. Schmidt's going to win his bet. Not that part. Get another part. Not where we picked the rocket. Right, right in front of it. Sure that the ones out here aren't thrown up from 
Yeah, I don't right. know if this is representative too much of elbow. I don't think so either. But let's pick up a couple, one more anyway, since we're out here. I see a little one. Got to be careful not to kick the dust all over them when you get there. Jim, I see uh, sort of a miniature raindrop here, it looks like. Yeah, just behind you is one of those fresh craters, too, with a lot of glass in it. Is it really? Yeah, right behind you. Okay, let's pick up these, get the okay, radio done.
catch it for you. Good try. Okay, you to lean forward some. Up and forward. Okay, I'll get the TV. Okay, Joe, going PM1 WB. Roger, Dave. Uh, Jim, could we have a heading reading as you climb on there? Yeah, heading's one, uh, 185, Joe. It'll sound steady as a rock. Thank you. Oh, my, I just kicked up a hole here, and uh, the rim of this little crater seems to be all white, much lighter albedo. Golly, day. Okay, Dave and Jim, and standing by for a mark as you roll. Okay, stand by. Okay, Joe, the time consumer here is the uh, seatbelt operation. Because uh, we definitely need them. And uh, in 16 g we don't compress the suits enough to... Uh, able to squish down and get the seatbelt locked without a certain amount of effort. Roger, we understand. I'll tell you, it's a good seatbelt design. It's a great seatbelt design. Okay, let's check the drive enable. They're all on. Drive power is on. Steering forward to bus A. 15 volt DC. Ready to go, Jimmy. Ready. Okay, Mark. Uh, Dave, uh, we want steering forward off. Dave and Jim, as you, as you drive away there, I was a little hasty on my time call. Uh, Mickey's big hand was actually over his head. And uh, we're running about uh, 30 minutes down now, but uh, we're still looking good. Okay. Okay, we're moving, uh, moving out again at about uh, 7, 8 clicks. Getting uh, 180. Head up to. Uh, we want about a 225. Yeah. If we could just find. Uh, if we drive along, there's several uh, craters, three to uh, five meters in diameter. one out at, uh, rather large one out at uh, 1 o'clock to us now. We have a heading of uh, 215. It looks fairly recent. There are a lot of angular blocks on the rim of it. Uh, Jim, let me interrupt a second here. Uh, can you confirm that your DAC is stopped? That what is stopped? Uh, the 16 millimeter camera. Yes, it is stopped. Thank you. Okay, Joe, we're... Careful, you're on me. Boy, that's a nice fresh one. There's the, uh... There's the answer to the... Gosh. Bump. Sure hate to go by that one. Okay, if we don't find a better crater, that might be a better one to come by, you know? Yeah. Don't we'll find a fresher one? Yeah, that's the freshest we've seen. It's a great one. Uh, well, approximate size, Dave. Uh, another fresh one over there at... Uh, 
11 o'clock. Okay, it's about uh, 20, 25 meters across, and it looked like it excavated the bedrock. It had a very blocky ejecta blanket and blocky rims, and ejecta blanket was about halfway out, blocks on the order of about a foot and a half uh, at the largest, and uh, some angular, some quite angular. But there's glass in the bottom of that one. Yeah, yeah there sure is. is. Yeah, we're starting a slight uh, upslope now. Roger. As we approach the front, and what a beautiful view looking up that slope. Isn't that, and you can see the liniments come yeah. down across there, can't you? Going from, uh, let's see, it's got to be uh, northeast to southwest, huh? Okay, let's pick a, let's just head up the slope here. It would be great if we could get up to that uh, rather large, large mountain. I think that's too far away, Dave. I do too. And it's, this is getting, oh, 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 look at these here. Oh. Deep, subdued. Deep, but, but there's not much fresh ejecta around them. Nope. Man, steep slopes, that must be 30 degrees on the side of a little old crater that couldn't be more than 10 meters across. We're heading for St. George, I think. Huh? Yeah. There are some uh, blocks now that look like uh, they're a foot, angular blocks. They seem like they're on the surface, Dave. Look over there at uh, 1130. Yeah. 11, yeah, they are. Most of them have been buried at this time, and those seem like they're right on the surface. Yeah, they're right on the surface for some reason. Oh, that antenna fell down. Okay, Joe, we're going uphill pretty good. Roger, Dave, copy. Uh, your updated range at station two is about 3.9 clicks. And if you'll park down sun, uh, we'll give you a nav update when you climb back on. All righty. Hey, we're reading 3.8 right now. Must be getting close. Don't you? That light, the light colored one out there? Yes, sir. That'd be a good one. But it looks awful rough up there, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's probably farther away. Dave, then we yeah. go. Well, well, we'll just keep pushing along here. There's a large block, uh, looks like about a five-footer out at uh, one o'clock. Angular right. block. Yeah, you're right. Why don't we go there? It's, we're in tow, we're going uphill. Yeah, Steve's dropped down to seven clicks. Yeah, yeah, if we just go straight over that big one. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Sounds good to us. Any place that looks good to the two of you. Looks fairly good. Okay, we're going to a big block here, Joe. It's one we just can't afford to miss. But just to look at a big block, we're going to go look at a big block. It's the only big block I see anywhere. Yeah. Hey, we can get to that fresh one, too, Jim. Hang on. Hang on. Take it in. Jim, as you look back, can you see the rover tracks? Oh, uh, and, uh, can oh look yeah, up. yeah, we could, Joe. I saw them when we stopped at the last stop. Okay, good. Sounds like the old Hansel and Gretel trick will work. Yeah, man. Okay, we're there, Jim. You can get off. You can try and get off. Okay, Joe, I'm going to give you uh, the nav update as soon as Jim gets off. Roger. I was going to give him some... Oh, you give it. I'll give it to him. Good. Let me go get the TV. Get okay, Joe, if you're ready to copy, here we go. 280-017-055-039-105-110. 